Hi, I'm Jelly from Greenwood Solutions. Today's presentation is on secondary protection boards for commercial solar systems. Have you got protection? Step by step. What is primary protection? What is secondary protection? When is secondary protection required? So let's have a look at primary protection. These are the protection settings programmed to each individual inverter. Max voltage, uh, hold time, etc. It's mandated by AS4777.1, Australia, New Zealand, and other countries will have their own applicable regulations. And settings may vary from each DNSP, Distribution Network Service Provider. So make sure that when you're dealing with your specific DNSP that you have all the correct settings. What is secondary protection? It's a term used to describe protection between the solar inverters and the grid effectively. So it's plan B after the primary protection of the inverters. And it consists of various components inside an enclosure. So things such as over voltage, under voltage, over frequency and under frequency can be set. And it's designed to protect the grid. Since July 2017, all systems with combined inverter capacity of over 30 kilowatts require secondary protection, and this is Australia-wide, so all the DNSPs. Note, solar capacity can exceed 30 kilowatts with no secondary protection required, as long as the AC is below that point. Remember, grid protection is secondary protection. The primary protection is effectively one of the functionalities of the inverters that you've installed. The secondary protection is there because the distributors in their infinite wisdom have decided that their infrastructure needs further protection. So what does it actually do? Well, it shuts down the flow of energy from the inverters to the grid. And the main component is a relay that sends a signal to open a contactor. The relay responds to pre-programmed settings that are triggered by certain conditions. For, for example, over voltage, under voltage, over frequency and under frequency. So what components are inside? Well, there's a circuit breaker for the inverters. There's an AC contactor or motorized circuit breaker and a protection relay and a power supply for the relay, cabling, main switch. For example, say we have three Fronius Eco 27 kilowatt inverters. We'll need three corresponding circuit breakers in the secondary protection board, say 50 amps each, but as the design installer, you select these. So we have these three Fronius Eco 27 kilowatt inverters the AC contactor is sized accordingly based on combined inverter capacity on the AC side. Main switch is sized accordingly based on combined inverter capacity on the AC side. On bigger systems, the AC contactor and main switch is replaced with a motorized circuit breaker, an all-in-one approach. Now with some of the bigger boards, in our case with our GridSafe GS100, we've incorporated the AC contactor and the main switch into one unit. So we use a 160 amp motorized circuit breaker. So less components actually inside the board, which allows the installer a bit more room um, in regards to getting cabling in and, on, and taking into consideration bending uh, cable radiuses. The relay is the brains behind the protection. Relays used include Mains Pro, Tele, Woodward. Some distributors only accept certain brands. And we use all three. Now, depending on the size of the board required, we can use an AC contactor, a main switch, or a motorized circuit breaker. A suitably rated AC contactor for smaller boards and a main switch, for example, 50 kilowatts on the AC will require a 100 amp main switch. A motorized circuit breaker replaces both main switch and AC isolator on larger boards. Now, what are the triggers for the relay? Sustained over voltage, over voltage, under voltage, over frequency, under frequency, and other triggers. 
Where are the boards actually installed, these secondary protection boards? Between the inverters and the main switchboard in most cases. Between the inverters and a distribution board. And note some DNSPs only accept a connection to the MSB. In most cases, the secondary protection boards are being installed fairly close to the MSB. And in fact, some um, distribution network service providers uh, stipulate that, that the secondary protection must always be connected to the main switchboard. Others are, are less um, severe in their, um, in their allowances and you can connect to a distribution board or a, or a secondary switchboard. Conclusion. The systems over 30 kilowatt on the AC side will need secondary protection. Secondary protection is plan B after the inverter's primary protection. Depending on the AC capacity, a motorised circuit breaker can be used as contactor and main switch. The secondary protection is usually installed between the inverters and the main switchboard. Thanks for watching our presentation on secondary protection boards. If you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, please feel free to drop us a line. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.